Good morning, church. Hope you all had a good week. Right. This morning, for our um, for our, for our portion, can we look to um, the gospel according to Luke? We'll read from chapter twenty-one. We'll read verses 1 to 4. Luke chapter 21 and the first four verses. Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box. And he saw a poor widow put two small copper coins. And he said, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live. Also, we'll um, read from Malachi. We'll read chapter three from chapter three, Malachi chapter three, verses sixteen and seventeen. It reads, "Then those who feared the Lord." spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them. And a book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. They shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts, in the day when I make up my treasure, treasured position, and I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves him. Finally, we'll read from Psalms. We'll read from Psalms 73. Ah. Psalms 73, and we'll read verse 26. I'll read it from the NLT version. It reads, My health may fail, and my spirit may grow weak. But God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. Let's pray. God, a gracious and loving Heavenly Father, Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thy children come to thy feet this morning, our Lord. Lord, we thank thee, Lord. Lord, just a few days back, Lord, we were not able to gather here in, in, uh, as a family, Lord, uh, physically, but Lord, Today, that almost looks like a distant dream, Lord. Lord, we thank thee for this opportunity, Lord, uh, to gather here and, Lord, uh, spend time in your, your and each other's fellowship, Lord. Lord, this morning, as we gather here, Lord, we come with earnest and expectant hearts, Lord. Lord, give us a glimpse from your heart, Lord. Show us what pleases you, Lord. And, Lord, help us to, Lord, bring forth an offering which will be holy and acceptable and will be like a sweet aroma to you, Lord. Lead us, guide us, and help us, Lord. All these things are asked through the precious and mighty name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Right. So um, I'll try and stick to the way that I go uh, with the message. Um, imagine uh, you had a chance encounter with uh, maybe, I don't know, Jeff Bezos or uh, Bill Gates or um, uh, Elon Musk, for example, you had a chance encounter with them. Some have, they were going somewhere. You just happened to meet them. You strike up a conversation with them, and they are intrigued. And they uh, then they invite you over to their house for lunch or dinner. Now you wouldn't want to go there empty-handed, right? Like you would want to take some 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 present in your hand while you go to meet them. You would want to take some present in your hand. And so you'd start to think, what can I get this guy? And so you'd go, uh, you won't leave it, obviously you won't leave it to the last moment. You'll, you'll go do some, a bit of research, see what this guy, uh, what this person likes, what, what he dislikes, what maybe he's allergic to something, maybe he's not, he's allergic to flowers. If you can find that information, you try and do a bit of research to see what that person likes. And um, if you, the gift that you're taking that person, if it will bring that person joy, or uh, if it will come in actually handy. 
and you can be thinking in, in the back of your mind, what can I take this person who seems to have pretty much everything in the world, what can I take him? Will it have to be something store-bought or will it have to be something maybe personal? Um, and when you're thinking on those lines, like you may think like, like you, so let, let's say you think uh, you, you buy something store-bought, it may be expensive, it may be very well put, but um, for them it may be just a run-of-a-mill kind of a present, it may not even be worth a second glance, they may just you leave it to one side. But like the advantage with taking something personal is, it is something that, it is something unique. It is something that probably nobody else can give you. It can be something just like, maybe you have a good handwriting, maybe you just write a note, uh, a, a favorite recipe of yours, you, you put it in a, a very uh, presentable handwriting, you put it and you give it that as a gift. Maybe that person will cherish it a lot. So, but, but the idea there is when you give something personal, it is unique to you. It has your signature, it is yours. And when you give something like that, um, the person receiving it is, they are bound to see the work that you put into that gift. It is, it is not something that you just paid money, bought it, and then you gave it to this person. It is, they can see the effort and the love and the, 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 the work that you put in uh, to giving them that gift. So, so that, is, that is something that is not uh, very, uh, that is not uh, uh, replaceable. It has some intrinsic value to it. Now, I don't know who you imagined when I said Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos and all of them, but like, uh, depending on the person that uh, you imagined, um, uh, I'm not sure how much value this uh, imaginary host uh, has been able to add uh, to your life. Not all of us have Tesla cars, but like maybe we may have used Microsoft Word, but we pay for that service. We may use, may use Amazon, but we pay for that service. So I don't know how much value they have added to your life, but like when you, when you are actually, if you, if you get a chance and if you're actually going to meet that person, you put in a lot of thought to the gift that you'll be taking for them. Now, this morning, you are here in the presence of the King of Kings, the one who has made heaven and earth, the creator. This morning, uh, when uh, uh, Brother Lawrence read from Isaiah 66, if you read, uh, look at the, the start of that verse, it says, everything was created by his hand. He's declaring, God is declaring that everything was created by his hand. And in, you're in the presence of that kind of an almighty creator, who, who you're even you're, the essence of your life is in his hands. It can be snuffed out within a second. You're in that kind of a ho holy uh, uh, God's presence. And the, the, the worship that we bring this off this morning, since when have you been? Since when have you and me been thinking of this worship? I like it. Uh, I like the way um, Brother Lawrence put it this morning. He was saying that everything that we do is no, it is it is in service of the Lord. So our worship should not be confined to uh, what a preacher brings uh, this morning and only be about that. Our worship should be something that should start way before a preacher or somebody uh, uh, brings uh, this thing. Of course, you can bring elements of that, uh, whatever the preacher is uh, talking, you can bring elements of that into your worship, but your worship is something far more valuable than that. It is, it is dependent on your experience with God each day. As you experience God each day, as you experience his kindness, as you experience his goodness, as you experience his mercy, that is what we need to be thankful for and we need to um, thank God for. Um, now, um, this morning, uh, so the question here is, since when have you thought of these words of worship that you are about to bring forth? And are these words from your personal experience or are they just store-bought? Um, now, when we look at the psalmist words, we read from Psalm uh, 73, we read verse uh, 26. It said, um, my health may fail and my spirit may grow weak. I'm reading from the NLT version. My health may fail and my spirit may grow weak, but, the, but, but God remains the strength of my heart. 
He is mine forever. Like if you see here, all of us go through this, these kind of circumstances. We go through health issues. We grow through, go through uh, testing times when our faith may not be as strong as we, we want it to be. We may question God. But even when we go, when we are able to go through and when we are able to, uh, there may be testing times and when we are able to get to the other end of the testing time and we think, how did I ever pass through that? How did I come out through that uh, testing times? It is because of the hope that God has filled in your heart. The, the, he has been the strength that has helped us uh, uh, get through those trials. We, we have uh, this um, verse, it, it kind of echoes and it speaks to us because in spite of um, the trials that the psalmist is facing here, he's able to claim this promise. He's able to say that God is mine. He's able to claim that. Um, he's, he's a, he has that personal experience with God. And he's able to say that God is my strength. He's the one, he's the reason because of which I was able to overcome that uh, trial or that tribulation. Is this something uh, that is a, 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 a part of our lives as well? Is this something, uh, is this our experience as well? Now, the, this is uh, one reason why we can uh, be thankful to God, why we can, uh, this morning, why we can thank him for what he has done. Um, now, going back to our imaginary uh, dinner situation, um, let's, um, Let's uh, so let, let's let's guess that the, the pleasantries are over. You, the host, whoever has invited you, they've invited into the invited into your uh, into their house, and they, you've given the gift to them, and then uh, you actually sit for dinner with them. Now, what will be the 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 tone of the conversation? Most likely, it'll be that we'll try and we'll steer the conversation away from us. We'll try and we'll try and talk about them, how how they have achieved what they have achieved in their life, how they how they started how how they started, uh, what were the challenges that they faced, what were how they overcame those challenges, and how they succeeded in life. What what is uh, what what pleases them? What 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 are the things that they like? So we try and we don't try and hijack the conversation, and uh, we don't uh, talk about our trials, our struggles, and our, our our difficulties and our challenges. That is not. We we try and we try and reduce that, and we try and um, we try and focus. We try to we try to um, understand what actually makes them tick. So this morning, as we gather here, um, we we can learn a lot from the book of Malachi. Because this, in this book, we, we see um, how God confronts the children of Israel. If we go to uh, Malachi, God actually uh, confronts them on, on a, quite a few uh, different things. But uh, if, we, if we look, um, if you see, Malachi, uh, uh, first thing is he confronts them um, of his, he, he tells them that God, he, he has to remind them of his love for them. He's, if you read uh, Malachi chapter, chapter 1, verse, uh, cha verse 2, he says, it says, I have loved you, says the Lord, but you say, how have you loved us? The people are uh, the people are questioning God. There may be uh, many times in our life as well when 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 we when we go through trials and uh, tribulations when we we'll, we'll actually question God. Lord, why is this happening to me? Do you really love me? Is this what you have chosen for uh, uh, your servant who's uh, serving you? We quest, we do that. We 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 question God's love, and we have we see how God um, how God answers them. He has to remind them that they were chosen by Him over Esau. How um, God chose this family, and how uh, they are still they, He has a covenant with the, with these people because God chose them. Now the second uh, reason that he uh, the the second reason with which God confronts uh, Israel here is uh, for offering polluted sacrifices. If you see, if you keep going down, uh, chapter one, uh, we go down to verse. Let's go down to uh, if you see from uh, verse six. A son honor, honors his father. 
and a servant his master. If then I am a father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my fear? Says the Lord of hosts to you, O priests, who despise my name. But you say, how have we despised your name? By offering polluted food upon my altar. So what is the polluted food that uh, the children of Israel are offering? They, they bring sickly calves. They bring sickly animals. Animals that are just about to die and they are sacrificing those to the Lord. Why are they doing this? Because we have a term in our regional languages, we have a term, uh, like in Telugu we say mokubadi, or in uh, Hindi we say naam ke vaste. Like we are doing it just as a ritual, we are just doing it um, because uh, we, it, it is a job, it, it is something that we just want to get it done, get it over with. There's no real commitment, there is no real uh, uh, joy to actually present that offering. We may say that, okay, today we don't have this, uh, the, this issue, brother. We, we, we no longer sacrifice uh, animals, so we don't bring in anything sickly. We don't bring in anything uh, that, is, uh, that is not well, and we don't uh, 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 offer a, substa a substandard sacrifice. But just to give an example, sometimes when we ask the kids to pray, they're like, no, I don't want to pray. It's like you really don't want to put your heart into the prayer. It is, it is something that you, you may do it eventually, but it is something that you do out of compulsion. The, the same thing like uh, when we are, uh, the, there are so many things that we do to serve the Lord. If it is not out of our heart, if, the, if that service does not bring joy in our heart, and we do it because there is nobody else to do it, and we are just doing it to get a job done, then that sacrifice or then that worship, that offering is blemished. It is not uh, a pure, it is not uh, a sacrifice, that is, it is a sacrifice that is polluted. Now the other, um, now the other uh, reason that the Lord uh, gives to the children of Israel uh, for like uh, children of Israel in this chapter um, as a reason, uh, and he confronts them on this is, um, he says that they have idols among them. They have, they, he, he accuses them of idolatry. If you see here, we go to chapter two, and we'll um, uh, we'll read we'll read uh, uh, verse eleven. Malachi chapter 2, verse 11. Judah has been faithless, and uh, abomination has been committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah has profaned the sanctuary of the Lord, which he loves, and has married the daughter uh, of foreign gods. So the children of Israel, what they were doing is, they would, if, you, if you keep reading that chapter, we'll see that they were uh, di divorcing their wives, uh, uh, who were uh, who are Jewish or who are uh, from the same community? They were divorcing their wives, and they were marrying people from uh, uh, other religions and other uh, 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 divisions. And they were just to please the new wife. They were sacrificing to those new gods, and to th they were sacrificing to those idols. And they were, uh, and thus the idolatry was become uh, idolatry become a part of their lives. Now we may. Um, now we, we may say that, uh, brother, we don't have this, we, we worship only uh, Christ we, in our lives. But whenever there's a problem in our lives, who do we look to? Do we look to try and get that job done uh, through some political influence? If we know some people who are in power, do we try to go to them and try to get, it, to get the job done, done? Or if it is uh, something, if you have the money, if you have the means to get it done, do you use those means to get the job done? If so, then we are doing, we are, we are, we are, we are uh, idolatry. We don't completely, completely trust the Lord. We, we want to do it our own way. Uh, we, we are more interested in getting the job done by any means. So this, uh, this is a sin that is even prevalent in, in our lives as well. If we look deep in our lives, this is something that is prevalent even in our lives. Now, the fourth one that um, the Lord accuses uh, the children is, um, of Israel is for not bringing in their tithes. So if we go down to chapter 3, uh, we'll read from uh, verse 8. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. Will 
will man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, how have we robbed you? In your tithes and contribution. So if we keep reading through that chapter, we'll see the children of Israel, they were not bringing in their full tithes. They were uh, they maybe partially or like sometimes uh, it was non-existent. We may say that, brother, as soon as I get my salary, I take out a portion, I keep it aside, and I bring in uh, that portion and I give it uh, to the Lord uh, uh, throughout the month or however. Have you ever been in a situation where, uh, in the world where you saw a need, there was a need, and you had the means to, to, to fulfill that need? Maybe somebody was uh, uh, out of money or something. There, there was some sickness. There was some, some, some need out in the world. There was some need. But, and you were moved by the Spirit to actually go and help, and, but you chose not to because it would, have cost your, it would have cost you your time or it would have cost you your money or some, 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 it would have cost you. So you thought, okay, I don't have the time to deal with this now, so I'm, I'm, going, to, uh, I'm going to ignore that. If we have done this, then we are guilty of uh, uh, not bringing in our tithes as well. Because if you read in Matthew chapter 25, uh, the, on the day of judgment, when, go, when God separates the uh, sheep from the goat, what is the, 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 the measure by which he chooses the sheep? It is uh, to the least of these brethren to whom you have done it. He, he says that to the least of the brethren to whom you have done it, you have done it for me. People who are in prison, you go and meet them. People who are sick, you, you spend time with them. You try and uh, reach out to them. All these kind of things, these are the, 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 the yardstick by which the Lord measures and the, uh, the Lord judges. And we, we may be faithful in bringing our tithes as a, as a ritualistic uh, uh, thing in our lives, but outside when we are actually in, in, the, in the real world, when we are confronted with uh, a situation where we have to, uh, when we have to sacrificially uh, spend our time, spend our resources to fulfill that need, we may take a step back. And there, there lies our, uh, our deficiency in bringing in tithes to the Lord. So, but it is not all gloom in this chapter. If we keep going down, and uh, if we read from uh, verse, chapter 3, verse eight, uh, 18, 17, and eight, uh, sorry, uh, 16 and 17, it reads, Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention. Have you, have you, have you, have you paid attention to that? Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention. The, the God, King of kings, Lord of lords, the one who created heaven and earth, he is paying attention to the words of men. He is paying attention to words of men. men peep, when we are spending time with the Lord, when we are worshipping him, when we are praising him for what he has done, he is taking account of all of that. Just as, as, as every tear of ours, when we go to the Lord and when we cry, uh, just as each of the tears is, is collected and is kept by the Lord, even our words that we, with, that we commit to the Lord is, is kept, uh, there's a record kept of it. So the Lord, it is, it is like um, the Lord diligently, like the, the, the Lord rewards people who diligently seek him and who, who accept him as their Lord and, uh, and uh, he, he rewards them. He rewards them by remembering them. This is something that, is, that we can be truly uh, glad of and we can truly uh, thank God. The God who, who created heaven and earth, who commands nature, he's interested in the conversation of men. He's interested in what you and I say this morning. He's interested if you are thankful, really, truly thankful from, your bo from the bottom of your heart. He's interested in that. And he keeps record of that. Uh, like it is, if you can, if you can get the time, go and read through this chapter. We see the day of judgment is actually a day of uh, rejoicing for people of God because he, it, is, it is something that uh, uh, the, the Lord will, uh, if, if we'll, we'll actually do that. We'll just go down, if we go to chapter 4, um, uh, if you see here, 
let's read from chapter 4. For behold, the, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day is coming, uh, the day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave uh, them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing. The day of the Lord is a blessing. It's a healing for people who, who accept him, who, who accept his righteousness. And, and, and if you see here, um, it, it's a, it, uh, sorry, uh, shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping out, leaping like calves from the stall. It's a joyous day for those who believe and who trust in the Lord. Now, <clears throat> now the, uh, the, the thing, uh, let's come down to the, uh, the widow story. We, we read from Luke, uh, we, this morning we read from Luke and we saw how the Lord um, uh, noticed this widow putting in two copper coins into the, into the, uh, into the collection box. Did that, do you think that woman, that woman when she was putting those two copper coins, do you think that the woman, did she not know that it was a small sum? Of course she knew. She knew it was a small sum. When, when, when compared to all what the others were putting into the box, she knew that it was a small sum. But the, 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 the good thing about this is, there is no blemish in this offering. Because, uh, when we put into the offering box, we put in out of our abundance. This woman, this was the last of her resources. She didn't have anything else. This was the last of her resources. She was not doing it casually, like Mukubadi or like we, we say Mukubadi, just, just, just to please men or to please somebody. She was not doing it like that. She, was, she put in an effort. This was literally her last meal and she was putting it in there. This was not something casual. That was, there was a lot, there was pain in the offering. When she was offering something to the Lord, there was pain. It affected her daily life. There was pain in that offering. And so there was, we can't say that there is a blemish in that offering. Now, the second thing was, did she put, she had two coins. Did she put one and she, did she hold back on the other one? No, she put both. So there, from this one, we know that, um, she totally trusted the Lord. The, the second uh, accusation against the children of, uh, what was the second accusation against the children of the Lord? Uh, for their idolatry, they, they trusted in, we, we trust in so many other things. We trust in our money, we trust in our, our, our political connections, we trust in so many other things. But for this woman, Jehovah Jireh was her provider. She knew that her daily bread for the next day came from the Lord. She, she, whatever she had, she gave it off. She knew her Lord was able to provide for her. And then the, finally, if you see here, the, the fourth this thing was um, for not offering the tithes. The, the children of Israel were convicted for not offering their tithes. We don't know if this, this, the amount that this woman, if it was her tithe or if it was not, uh, less than her tithe, we don't know that. But the, the, the good thing about this is she is seeing beyond her need. She is seeing beyond her need. There is a need in the house of the Lord, and she is seeing beyond her need. It may not be the, well, the one-tenth of her income, but she is able to see beyond her need, and she is able to uh, give away what she has to fulfill that need in the house of the Lord. So, <clears throat> I'll, I'll, before I uh, finish, I'll, I'll like to share a small uh, story. I, I read this um, sometime long back when I was a kid. I read this somewhere. So one uh, a relatively elderly man was talking about uh, this, uh, this particular story. And he, he was saying that uh, in church, he was talking about this. And he was, uh, he was saying that the, uh, there was once a time where I had just of a few dollars in my pocket. I literally had nothing. I was sitting in the house of the Lord and I came and I prayed to the Lord, cried to the Lord and I, I came on whatever was in my pocket, whatever few dollars I had, I put it into the uh, offering box. And look at me today. I have uh, industries, I have uh, 
X, Y, Z, lands here, lands there, I have this, that, uh, et cetera. So somebody from the back of the, the pew, they, they shoot back, they say, bet you can't do it a second time. That is the, the that is the kind of condition that the, the idea behind the story is not so that we give away all our possessions and kind of lead an ascetic life. That's not the challenge. The, the, that's not the, the idea behind this, me sharing the story. The idea is where does our allegiance lie? Where does our loyalty lie? Where does our treasure lie? It is this message is a reminder that our worship does not begin on a Sunday. It is not an act done just for the sake of it, to please men, but our worship must stem from our relationship with God, which grows each day, which has to grow each day. A, a worship that is not based upon situations, a worship which is a response evo that is evoked from our hearts as we begin to understand the love of God and his, um, as we begin to understand God's intense and unchanging love for us. It is a, a, a challenge to us uh, this morning uh, to question us if God is the strength of our hearts. May God bless us, Lord.